You guys are ready. Ready? Okay. Then we want to welcome everyone back to, again, uh, this afternoon segment of, again, the uh, the annual market. I can believe it's been going for three, four years or something. So, again, an indigenous uh, fine arts market, I believe that's the term I have. So, mm -hmm. But um, anyway, I wanted to welcome a good friend of mine. I've known his father back of almost 50 years ago, General Grant, and uh, coming from Cherokee, North Carolina. And um, anyway, he has a display of a lot of his work that uh, has kind of hit the market here in the Southwest over the last, I would say, 10 years or so. And one of them, of course, is Antonio Grant, a uh, gentleman I've gone to know and respect his friendship and uh, his work, admire a lot of his work. But uh, I'd like to ask uh, Antonio to perhaps introduce himself a little bit of where he comes from, what he does, and mm -hmm. a little bit about the Turkey culture, their way of life, and then, of course, Wampum. Okay. Well, my name is Antonio Grant. I am from Cherokee, North Carolina. I am Navajo from my mother's side and Cherokee from my father and Sue. And I uh, grew up in Cherokee, North Carolina. And what, I, what I'm doing here is uh, wampum, the show work. Uh, I started doing show work maybe um, 2010 when I started. I started doing the traditional shell carvings over here. These are from the mound builders. Uh, they're like the Anasazis, but on the east coast, the mound builders. Many tribes descended from them, and they still remember all their creation stories. And when they started cataloging all the carvings, they started seeing their, their creation stories in these shells. So many tribes, like the Choctaw, the Caddo, the Cherokees, the Cachadas, they see themselves in these shells their creation stories. So what I'm doing is uh, bringing these back, putting them on new shells, what the traditional, the way it was 1500 years ago. And we move over here to the wampum. The wampum, a lot of people, they, they think it's a currency, but before that it was given for peace, friendship, and alliances amongst each other in the form of a wampum belt. Nowadays, the native people on the East Coast use this and they show their beauty of their arts and their stories of the wampum is a little bit different but it still means the same. And this is how a lot of people they express their tribal beliefs and uh, ways of days of old. So this is the wampum. Years ago, Partnering trade and, uh, and it was extreme, especially among a lot of the woodland people. You know, mm -hmm. we revere the wampum and, mm -hmm. and uh, in a in a strong way because we used to say that our necklaces, those that were made out of wampum, those were that showed wealth and that showed position. Especially, mm -hmm. a lot of the grandmothers would wear a lot of wampum necklaces, a lot of to, again to demonstrate their pride and their their wealth, so to speak. So, mm -hmm. but uh, you know we're. Where do you collect a lot of your wampum and everything? That people all want, you know, I ask a lot of these questions. Yes, and, yes. Know. Well, it comes from the Atlantic Ocean. It's mostly abundant in the northern part of the United States and probably into Canada. But I have found them in the Gulf of Mexico on one of my days down there. I was walking in the water and I seen a shell. So I broke it open and it was purple inside. And we also found a piece here. It was in found it in Virginia Beach Fine. so it is on the East Coast but mostly abundant on the northern parts of the United States mm -hmm. and a little bit about uh, Cherokee culture you know, because we have a lot of coverage from around the world you know, this thing, and I don't know how many thousand people this thing are watching but uh, kind of explain a little bit about your culture your way of life the influence you've had you know I do I recognize general is perhaps one of the originators of what we call the Indian taco you know back yes. in the 1960s <laughs> and we traveled a number of powwows together he's always been one of my big supporters and, and again I want to say hello to general out there you know and then uh, a lot of my friends from around Cherokee so you have a little bit of something you wish to say in behalf of your people well the Cherokee name it was a name from another tribe, and uh, what we call ourselves, the original name is Kitua. It's the Kitua. 
And um, in the Cherokee language, or the Kitua language, we don't have a word or any, any uh, R's in our language. So how can we be called Cherokee if there's no R's in our language? But we are called Kitua. That's just a little bit. They're probably one of the biggest tribes or nations in the country. You know, we recognize in Oklahoma. And, you know, the original, I think a lot of us have studied the Trail of Tears, you know, heard about the demise of Cherokee people. Well, we, I think almost every nation has gone through that as well, too, especially my tribe, uh, the Hochungara, we've been moved about eight times. And mm. Not as big as the Cherokee, but the most recognized. But uh, again, I want to yeah, I want to thank you, you know, on behalf of the Native Media Network and uh, IFAM and is there anything that you wish to perhaps say to the people in as much as the arts, you know, uh, what you're feeling? We've had a lot of words, good words expressed in behalf of, you know, the arts, not so much as a profession or craft, but as a way of life for a lot of us. Yeah. Well, um, to all the Native people, inspiring artists, you know, who are learning the art. My father always said, you know, when you learn your art, you'll know your culture and it always stays with you. So all these young artists, keep learning and know your culture and uh, put it out there. Living art. Uh -huh. I appreciate it. Yes. Thank you for your words.